there have been some banger Spider-Man fights over the years, right? I'm talking OD dope, y'all. Punches, thrown, people being thrown, Spider-Sense is flashing off, the slowdowns even are dope, CGI be going crazy. Spider-Man fights have given us all these things and more. Well, today we're going to rank every single live-action Spider-Man fight. All of them. So buckle up, strap yourselves in, get your comment fingers ready, because I know you're going to roast my opinions. You guys always do. And uh, let's just jump right into it, okay? We're going to start with the ones at the bottom of the tier. Honestly, is there even a bad fight? Rhino versus Spider-Man at the end of The Amazing Spider-Man 2. I am Rhino! This fight is so forced for no reason. I get they wanted to have Spider-Man come back from the tragedy he just suffered by the movie's end. But, like, there's not much to work with here. Outside of the coolness factor of Spider-Man returning to the job, even though it was like 45 seconds in the real world, there's nothing. I love the suit, and the CGI is still great, so there's that, but, like, the fight itself is like a nothing fight, and we don't even get to see its ending. MCU Shocker vs. Spider-Man in the school. This fight is also super lame. Again, this fight's really not much also. It's kind of a nothing fight, just like one or two punches are thrown by each side. This Shocker also has, like, zero experience, and he's, like, working Spider-Man. And Spider-Man also dominated the Avengers during Civil War before this. So, like, that alone also is kind of like, what the heck's going on here? Oh, and then Spider-Man is saved by his friend who has no idea how to be a superhero either. There's three people involved in this fight. Spider-Man is the only one who's trained, and he looks like the least experienced person here. Whack. MCU Shocker versus Spider-Man, the car chase fight scene. Yet again, we have more of Tom Holland's Spider-Man fumbling and bumbling around. The only reason this one's higher than the last one is because Ned doesn't come in and save him, finally. He actually gets nabbed by a supervillain, the Vulture, and another hero saves him this time. Still kind of lame that Spider-Man constantly needs to be saved, but at least it's not by people with much less experience than him against people with much less experience than him. Vulture's pretty experienced, and Iron Man's pretty experienced. So this one makes a little bit more sense, at least. Spider-Man and Mysterio versus the Fire Elemental. Yeah. Night Monkey! Yeah. Night Monkey, help! Night Monkey, save us! Far From Home is chocked filled with incredible fight scenes. Except this one. Any of the fights involving elementals are kind of boring because they're all controlled by Mysterio and it's planned out already. It just feels like Spider-Man doesn't matter in these fights because the ending is predetermined. He just didn't even know it at the time. So for us, who also didn't know at the time, when we find out, it's like, oh, that makes those fights even worse than they already were. They really didn't even have good choreography to start with. That wraps up the fights that are just whatever to me. This next year has some charm. Overall, they're not the best fights, but they still got some good stuff going on on the big screen, okay? This is where things start to get a little bit good, okay? Starting with Spider-Man 1, Spider-Man vs. Bonesaw. Bonesaw is ready. This fight, Spider-Man is still learning how to use his full abilities and the range of his powers. But it's a fun fight. You know, you get to see Spider-Man for the first time working in the live-action scene. This is pretty much his first fight in live-action ever. It's really cool. I will say it's kind of hard to believe that the Great Bonesaw... Could hurt Spider-Man? I mean, the dude's a regular human being. Even if he's slamming a chair against Spider-Man, it shouldn't do much. Regular humans break their hands on Spider-Man, so, like, I'm surprised the chair didn't just break on Spider-Man. The choreography is also, like, whatever. It's nothing to write home about. You also gotta give credit to the classic intro for the Spider-Man in this scene. Bruce Campbell nails it with all the charm, tells him he's got a stupid idea, and he really names him Spider-Man. The rest is history. What's your name, kid? The Human Spider. Human spider, that's it? That's the best you got? Yeah. Oh, that sucks. MCU Spider-Man vs. Electro at the Power Lines. Uh, you wouldn't happen to be from another universe, would you? Another fight where Tom Holland Spider-Man needs saving. You don't say. At least this time, it's more justifiable as he's fighting a being of pure electricity. I honestly don't know how he was supposed to beat him, but he managed to make it work. He's at least doing something on his own in this fight as well. He's not just like a damsel in distress. Electro looks great here, and it's cool to see Sandman and Spider-Man work together as a team considering Sandman did end Spider-Man 3, seemingly like a more benevolent person. Next up, we got the amazing Spider-Man first fight against the Lizard in the sewers. This fight's pretty quick, and Spider-Man sums up his performance pretty well. Oh, that sucked. But even still, it's a really neat fight. I love the web Spider-Man sits on in the beginning to try and detect where the Lizard's coming from. It's so Spider-like. We don't get that like at all in any of these other movies. The fight is also in a unique location. Lizard and the sewer fights are kind of synonymous, so it's great to see the classic villain in his classic setting on the big screen. It being so quick, though, is a big letdown, and I wish the underwater part of the fight was a bit more, like, choreographed. I feel like the Lizard's just kind of thrashing him. And I understand the Lizard's more of an aquatic creature than Spider-Man, but Spider-Man just gets bodied the moment he touches the water, and honestly, beforehand, too. It's a solid fight, though. The Amazing Spider-Man 2, Spider-Man vs. the Robbers, the intro. Jack, 
A police chase is in progress. This scene is on the cusp of the next tier. The swinging and the CGI is just unrealistically fire. It's incredible. It is just, there's just so much to write home about when you're talking about those two. But my man Spider-Man also puts hella people in danger, letting baby Rhino drive through cars in traffic just so he can make a few more jokes to him. I also can't stand Paul Giamatti's Rhino. Like, I literally can't stand it. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know I probably talked about it. You can't deny, though. Outside of those few things, this scene does have a lot of charm. I'll take that. That's not your one. That wraps up the lower end fights. Every fight up until now either had major flaws or it's just uninspiring in large part. But here on out, we ramp it up, people. The next coming up fights are better than the last few and there's lots more heartbreak and emotion in them as well. Plus, peak Spider-Man moments. Spider-Man versus thugs to save Mary Jane. This fight just rocks. It feels so cheesy in the best way possible. It starts with MJ getting attacked by thugs when Spider-Man webs them up all off of her. Wait, y'all see that? This is a Spider-Man movie? Nice. Spider-Man then gets into the fisticuffs with these thugs and does some cool stuff. Rolls over one of the thugs. My favorite part is when he like back hits these two and they flash so far they fly into the window. Mary Jane has to like actively dodge out of the way of hitting them. It's great. This is a great fight. We got No Way Home Spider-Man versus Doc Ock on the bridge. This is just such a solid fight. Spider-Man feels like Spider-Man within this fight. The way he moves, the way he's swinging around, his last second saves. The choreography is really cool too. I love the effects. I love this shot from the helicopter when you could just see like Spider-Man dancing with the arms. When Tom breaks out of the car too and he's like, What did you just say? That is godlike. The fight is cut a little short sadly, but we really got to tow it home to like all these cool little moments and acrobatic tricks Tom was doing out here. It was so Spider-Man. Next up, we got Spider-Man 1, Spider-Man vs. Green Goblin in the burning building. I'll be here when you get back. Not coming back, Chief. This fight has one of the all-time most memorable fight scene moments in Spider-Man history, y'all. When Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man dodges in and out of those goblin discs, it's so freaking sick. I saw this movie when it released, don't do the math on that to figure out how old I am, and it lived rent-free in my head for years. I'd play dodgeball and dodgeball and be like, that's me, I'm Spider-Man, I feel like Spider-Man, because this scene was everything. This scene also has a funny intro too with Goblin like shrieking and then punching Spider-Man in the face, I loved it. <laughs> Sadly the fight loses points for not being like long sustained, there's not much choreography. It's pretty quick, Spider-Man just dipping in and out, you know, he gets his licks back in and then he dips. The choreography is a little lackluster and straightforward, but the fight is phenomenal. Spider-Man vs. Lizard Final Battle. This scene has some high stakes, some heart-wrenching moments, some heroic moments, solid choreography, great effects. The fight is just a great finale fight. I love the scenery it takes place on as well. It just looks so pretty. The tension with Spider-Man also trying to stop the lizard gas from going off adds an extra layer to an already brutal fight. It's not just like Spider-Man and Lizard in a slobber knocker. It's Spider-Man racing against time to save people from a dastardly infection that would turn them all into lizards, while also giving Lizard hands. I do wish this fight had more fighting. It's a lot of haymakers and cool moments, but like nothing insanely mind-blowing. The effects are just great. I'm probably going to say that a lot about the Amazing Spider-Man movies. They put all their budget into the effects and Andrew Garfield. Spider-Man vs. Sandman, the car chase scene. I guess you haven't heard. I'm the sheriff around these parts. Okay. This scene is freaking cool. It is so cool. With all the different ways Sam informs himself, it's so cool. It's also just like a great car scene. Something the Amazing Spider-Man attempted, but didn't live up to the hype as much. Andrew, why'd you let those people die? See, Toby tried to stop the dangerous moving vehicle. That's how it's done. I also really like how like the scene exits the truck so often, but manages to find a way back in. Spider-Man's like getting hit by a car, webs back onto the truck. Spider-Man's fighting Sandman outside of the truck. Sandman punches him back into the truck with a giant sand hammer. Like, it's really, really cool. It's like a game of King of the Hill. Where do all these guys come from? Spider-Man vs. Green Goblin Thanksgiving Parade. This fight doesn't have much choreography. It's more like Green Goblin terrorizing Times Square, but that doesn't mean this fight isn't great. Out, am I? Green Goblin is ferocious. Spider-Man is making saves. Macy Gray is performing. Stan Lee is even here. This scene really feels like it's limited by its time with the fighting initially, where like Green Goblin is like punching and kicking the cops. Gotta love the foam posits though, those are nice. But then Green Goblin and Spider-Man tussle on his glider, and this looks really good. Spider-Man of course saves MJ, really good fight, just a great fight all around. Next up we got Sandman vs Spider-Man, the subway fight. 
This fight doesn't really have a lot of crazy choreography or anything, but it's raw. It is raw. Spider-Man sneaking around and hitting Sandman with full force. He's also very acrobatic in this, which is something I feel like I don't often say about Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. I love how the hits feel so impactful and how it flows just so well. Sandman getting his face shredded down by the train. That was awesome. Then he reforms it on the ground. He hardens his head. Then he hits Spider-Man. Then he makes a punch. Punches Spider-Man, who rolls with the punch, jumps off the train, and punches Sandman back. Like, it's so free-flowing. It looks awesome. It's a masterpiece. Mwah. This fight really put on display how powerful Spider-Man could be. Good riddance. Spider-Man vs. Vulture on the ferry. This scene is another scene that just feels so Spider-Man. Right off the bat, Tom takes the guy's keys and even says, Yoink! <laughs> like, no way. He actually said, yoink. Nah. <laughs> but he, it's, it's, it's great. Uh, he makes a joke about an illegal arm sale. He easily dispatches of no names like Shocker and hopefully this future Scorpion. But then he must fight the Vulture, while also having to deal with the FBI. Again, this is also Spider-Man. There's so much he has to deal with all at once to make sure everybody's safe. Vulture and Spider-Man's fight themselves is pretty solid, but it doesn't end with the bang seeing as how Vulture escapes. But Spider-Man does get this great scene where he's trying to save everybody on the sinking ship. And we all love this scene. We all remember it at the very least. It's, it's iconic. Come on now. Next up, we got Spider-Man vs. Doc Ock, the final battle at the pier. The fight's high stakes and great. There's not much action, and that doesn't really matter. A lot of great drama led up to this moment, and in this moment, there's even more drama pouring over. My favorite part about this scene is when Spider-Man is beating Doc Ock Skullin. MJ's yelling for Spider-Man to save her. Spider-Man's like, don't worry, MJ, I'm coming. Hang on, Mary J! And he rocks Doc Ock one more time for good measure. I do like Spider-Man being more of a saver in this scene than someone who has to win the final battle with his fisticuffs. You know... Spider-Man's all about saving people first. That's what I always think of when I think of Spider-Man. However, winning without your fist isn't going to get you the top spot on this list. So, this is where it's going to stay. Next up, we got Spider-Man and New Goblin versus Sandman and Venom. This fight's fire, guys. This fight's awesome. From Sandman pounding Spider-Man's face in with like a 200-foot sand hammer. Venom dropping bricks on MJ. New Goblin's last second arrival. Spider-Man saving his partner. What maybe knocks this fight down a little bit for me is it's a bit drawn out. I think this is done to give Venom some more characterization. He's not in it too much much and this is really his only fight with spider-man in the entire movie so i guess they tried to savor it as much as possible i gotta say the way toby spider-man ends venom though is awesome it is cool as heck this is another scene that lived in my brain rent free for years it's just so freaking cool spider-man versus vulture final battle what i love about this fight scene is it looks great and it goes to great places okay a lot of the fights take place in one spot and it's very stagnant or they're taking place in a spot that's kind of like murky muddy and gross looking not this fight this fight starts in like this little warehouse and then you get spider-man reenacting one of his most iconic scenes in the comics it's awesome then it goes to the stark plane so they're fighting in the sky and you guys know me from my other videos i love vulture fights in the sky like come on that's so cool and then it goes to the ground on the beach at like an amusement park and a boardwalk it's all these great places there's fire everywhere too which really sells that you know final battle feeling to it and again spider-man is a saver he's not really a murderer he's not supposed to be a mercenary everybody i love the fact that he even writes this little note for him too it's so good guys i love it next up spider-man versus harry spider-man 3. Is that all you got this scene again is just raw spider-man versus his best friend who's a bit of a prick and blames spider-man for something he really has no reason to blame spider-man for but i don't care this fight rocked harry stabbing peter the claws coming out of his arm Peter knocking the claws out. The one-liners Peter says to Harry, it's so good. Some of the one-liners are a bit out of character, but that's the Remy Black suit take. He's supposed to be more of an a-hole. He's supposed to be meaner, and God, did I love it. Oh, look at little Goblin Jr. Gonna cry? Spider-Man versus Electro at the power plant. This fight is a spectacle to marvel at. Electro is shining and shooting crazy, bright, cool-colored lightning at Spider-Man. Spider-Man's spider senses are on full display, dodging lightning like crazy. Gwen Stacy helping her mans out when he's in a pickle. The Amazing Spider-Man 2 has a lot of faults, but the effects were never one of them. This movie looks phenomenal. There's something to be said for just how acrobatic Andrew Spider-Man has shown off as well. The dude is exactly how I picture Spider-Man in the fight. He's just like, whoop, whoop, and he wears the perfect suit as well. I think my favorite part of this fight is when he says thank you Gwen Stacy after like Electro tries to fry his web shooters. Oh, thank you Gwen Stacy. 
But Gwen Stacy already helped him out. He knows how to get around Electro. So he's like, thank you, Gwen. Bam, and drops the dude onto the floor. Sick. Next up, we got Spider-Man vs. Lizard school fight. This scene goes crazy. Spider-Man and Lizard battling around the school in various rooms using chemistry formulas and materials to fight with. Fighting in a band room. Hey, there's Stan Lee. Great save, Spider-Man. Gwen showing up to help her man's always a great thing. She's such a ride or die. My favorite part about this fight is when Spider-Man's crawling on the lizard and like webbing him up like a spider. This movie has two moments in which Spider-Man was doing some really cool spider-like stuff. And I don't think a single other live action movie has any moments like this. Nevertheless, I love this moment. It's just so cool and unique. Something you'd think we'd see a lot more of, but nope. I'm gonna throw you out the window now. <laughs> Spider-Man vs. Green Goblin, The Amazing Spider-Man 2, The Final Battle. The fight itself is very interesting. Spider-Man's not really trying to beat the Green Goblin. He's more focused on trying to keep Gwen alive. He didn't really even care about the Goblin, who's his former friend. So it becomes more of a fight of Spider-Man trying to stop something that just feels so unavoidable. He's like swinging around, quickly webbing Gwen up and trying to pull her up. Not working. He's like fighting the Goblin off him, kicking him, trying to like gently place Gwen down. Not working. You see the clock tower, it's constantly ticking, so it feels like time is running out for Gwen. It is just like, oh my god, the anxiety you get watching the scene is just like a great anxiety. It's like, this is crazy. This scene broke me in the movie theaters, but man, was it a banger. Spider-Man vs. Green Goblin, Spider-Man 1. This fight is gritty as hell. Goblin flies Spider-Man over to this abandoned area and launches him through a wall to start. Damn! Oh, and then he drops a bomb on him too. Damn! There's also like no background music either, which makes it feel so much, much, much more serious. This fight isn't high flying. It's actually pretty grounded with like random flips here and there. But there is something to say for something that's straightforward like that. Just straight fists, straight cold blooded, just beating each other's aces. They're going to work. Like this almost doesn't even feel like a super powered fight. And I mean that in the best way possible. It's raw emotion and pain. Spider-Man versus the new goblin. Shut up! This fight? This fight. Nah, this fight is legendary, dog. This fight is so good. Like, aside from all the me moments, the, the shut up, the Spider-Man swinging, the, yep. This fight is superb. You've got new goblins showing up and just snatching Peter up off rip. He's flying around with them, slicing them up. You get to see the two go back and forth on top of the glider. You get to see Toby Spider-Man traverse stuff like you've never seen him before. I feel like we never see him move like this, especially during a fight scene. Like, this is awesome. And he's doing this without even his suit on. He's actually doing this in an actual suit. Spider-Man just also gets beat the f*** up here like he gets his ass kicked he just takes such a thrashing holy moly the ending of this fight is also like so peak spider-man even though it's like totally like way out of place because it was such like a serious fight but then he just like rides straight into a tripwire <laughs> like spider-man's like sitting there it looks like a, like a child stunt it's so goofy looking but like that's spider-man like when spider-man fights like that in the comics it feels super serious but a lot of the time Spider-Man knows he's levels above his opponent, and he's just like walking them to where he wants to get them. So he can just pull some quick little strat and end the fight. This little trick that he does is great, and the whole fight just goes insanely hard, man. Homies, 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 if you've made it this far in this video, I just want to say thank you. We are at the top 10. We've narrowed our way down to the final 10 selections out of all the Spider-Man fights there have ever been in live action. Like I said, though, I just want to say thank you to all of you for already watching this much. I love talking about this kind of stuff. And if y'all want to watch, I'll make these videos till the end of time. Honestly, even if you don't watch, I'd probably make these videos to the end of time. I love doing this stuff. And the fact that you guys are watching just means the world to me. Thank you guys so much. Let's get to the top 10. Number 10. Spider-Man vs. Green Goblin No Way Home Ending. This scene is godlike. Spider-Man is getting his rocks off. The choreography go crazy, too. The fight is a little similar to Toby's fight in the sense that it's like more grounded and more raw and more like emotion, but there's definitely way better choreography. You could tell like Tom's like knocking the knives out of Goblin's hand, Goblin stabbing Tom while he's fighting. The little maneuvers and whatnot are just so crazy, man. Seeing Norman's face and mannerisms more in the daylight only adds to it as well. I love this fight so much. This man, Spider-Man, webs Norman's face. Pulls it down into his freaking knee. You know that probably broke so many bones already. But then he webs his face again. Pulls him down. Jumps over him. Flips and suplexes him. God damn. That was awesome. <laughs> that ass. Uh, this, this fight go crazy. Let's go to the next one. That was only 10? Damn. This is insane. Number 9. 
Spider-Man versus Team Cap. This is Spider-Man's first appearance in the MCU, and boy, did it hit the ground running. He went crazy. He bodies both Falcon and Bucky. He bodies Ant-Man, and he holds his own against Captain America. God damn. The part that I enjoy most is him versus Falcon and Bucky. He's just, like, joking with both of them. Two men who are super serious military men. Spider-Man's just, like, playing around with them. You have a metal arm? Bucky throwing that punch at Spider-Man and his reply changed the game. You knew Spider-Man was here to make noise at that point. We're talking about an assassin who has killed countless people. And he throws his strongest attack at Spider-Man. And a kid, a kid stops it and marvels at it like a toy. Spider-Man is so cool. Number 8. The three Spider-Man versus the Finister Five. I love you guys. Who doesn't love this fight? We got to see our boys, our three Spider-Men, work together and take down all their adversaries. They learn to communicate and work together. There's plenty of moments in here that'll just make you laugh, cry, or stand out of your seat. Doc Ock seeing Spider-Man again. Perfect. Electro seeing Spider-Man again. Perfect. The intro swing after the regroup. Best moment in Spider-Man live action history. There's more. Electro's electric face. MJ helping Peter beat the lizard. Doctor Strange talking with the Spider-Man. Andrew saving Zendaya. This fight scene is godlike. Number 7, Spider-Man vs. Doc Ock, the bank and building fight scene. This fight starts off with Peter subtly saving Aunt May's life and getting suited up immediately. And then the brawl begins. Spider-Man tries to stop Doc Ock from robbing a bank, and we get a spectacular fight sequence. I love how the money bags are being used as weapons. It's so, like, on the fly, like they're fighting in a bank. Hey, let's use the money bags. But this definitely should have killed Doc Ock. I don't think you guys understand how heavy coins are. The fight then goes outside with Doc Ock kidnapping Spider-Man's aunt. Now the stakes are going through the roof. The moment when he saves Aunt May and him and Doc are like falling off the building while fighting is mind-blowing. This movie is 17 years old, but this scene is something that is better than most movies that came after it. Like, there's few scenes in any movie that came after it that I'd say were better than this. This is crazy. It's amazing. I also gotta give a nod to Aunt May for saving Peter here. We love a strong, independent woman. They make such a great team. We sure showed him. What do you mean, we? Number 6, Spider-Man vs. Mysterio, Final Fight. Come on, Peter Tingle. We got to see Spider-Man vs. Legions of Drones, which you would think is pretty boring, but the way he fights them is just peak Spider-Man. From webbing them up from the inside of the elemental animation, to maneuvering through mid-air and keeping his butt hydrated along the way, it's an excellent fight! Then you get to see Spider-Man in the hallway face-to-face -face with Mysterio, who's activated his illusions. And then the fight hits like a 15 out of 10. Spider-Man uses his spider sense, or Peter Tingle, whatever, I hate that name. Spider sense comes into play here big time, and we get to see one of the best displays of spider sense in the entire Spider-Man live action. This fight is so godlike. Ladies and gentlemen, we are at the top five, and let's just get right into it, okay? Number five, Spider-Man versus Electro Times Square. Spider-Man's talents of saving the day are on full display here. The scene of him saving the people in the bleachers is so clean, it hurts. The slowdown of him working his way around having a broken web shooter and like physically throwing one of the webs at somebody and pulling it. Then you get to see Electro like dropping a dope electric beat while he's charging up. Seriously, I love how the background music lines up with him so well. Some people may find that corny, but I personally love it. And then Spider-Man saving the day in the fireman's hat with our service workers. It's great, man. Just great. Number four. Spider-Man vs. Mysterio in Berlin. I cannot and will not ever get over how great these effects look in this scene. The whole scene would have you confusing life. Imagine being in Spider-Man's shoes for this. This man is pulling out dead mentors, spiders, an army of Mysterios. It's freaking awesome. Let's just marvel at the scene because it is so crazy. We're at the top three, ladies and gentlemen. Number three, Spider-Man versus Doctor Strange. Superhero versus superhero, master of the mystic arts versus boy who loses his backpack. Seems like it'd be a bit obvious who should win. Well, it turns out that boy who can't hold onto his backpack is actually a supercomputer type of genius and has proportionate strength of a spider. So I hope you didn't pick Doctor Strange. Seriously though, this fight is nigh perfect. The scenery and effects 
are great. The Mirror Dimension lends a helping hand to show off some really cool stuff. Spider-Man and Strange themselves are clearly not trying to hurt each other while trying to subdue the other, and it's awesome! I love how Spider-Man moves in this fight too. He quickly familiarizes himself with the terrain and how it works. His brain also knows no bounds, seeing as how this is the best and most Spider-Man way to end a fight. I called this line out in the theater when I was watching this movie for the first time because it's so Spider-Man and if you were just a Spider-Man fan to your core, you knew he was going to say, You know what's better than magic, boy? You know what's cooler than magic? <laughs> Math. Spider-Man going up against someone he looks up to to save villains because everyone deserves to be saved? Yeah, that's Spider-Man. The top two, and I'm pretty sure everyone knows what the top two are. I know I'm finna break some hearts when I say this, so I'm just going to rip the band-aid off. Number two. Spider-Man vs. Doc Ock, the train scene. This fight is just OD, 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 OD. It's so OD. The way these two move around the train, you think they both have eight arms. It's so fluidly shot too, like these two are throwing hands on a vehicle moving 100 miles per hour and I really don't even question it at all because it's just shot so damn well. Spider-Man losing because he's trying to take care of the people of the city? Yeah, that's Spider-Man. If he's gonna lose, at least have him lose how Spider-Man would lose. This fight is easily a 10 out of 10 fight. And if you have it as your best fight in the entire Spider-Man live action, no one would fall to. You'd get lots of creds. No one would be like, hot take, hot take, hot take. They'd just be like, oh, I, I like your list. That's, that, that could be the number one. It honestly might be the number one. For me, it's number two because the number one spot is Spider-Man versus Green Goblin in the condo. This is the number one fight in Spider-Man live action, in my opinion. This fight is just not fair. I don't know how you're supposed to compare anything to this fight. The choreography is godlike. From the intro spider sense scene we all love to Spider-Man vs. Goblin starting out, it's just fire. Spider-Man and Goblin going through windows. Spider-Man webbing Goblin so he doesn't fall out of the building just so Goblin can throw him through another window. Goblin kicking Spider-Man through a wall just to break down a door to walk through. Spider-Man beating the brakes off of Green Goblin for him to just smile and cackle and laugh it off in his face. Lordy, lordy. <laughs> Let's also talk about the lizard snag. This man flies out of nowhere, grabs him, tosses him, re-grabs him, throws him back into the building. This little CGI thing probably doesn't even look cool to most people, but to me, it looks awesome. I love that re-grab. It looks so like they didn't have to do that, but I like that they did. But that's not even close to the best part. Norman goes Omega WWE mode and throws Spider-Man off the ceiling, catches him, and then suplexes him through seven stories. Goblin then kills Aunt May. This entire fight is so fast and crazy. If you blink, you will miss something. I can rewatch this fight all day. That is why this fight is my number one Spider-Man fight in live action. What's yours, though? Did you choose? Don't want to choose? Gods don't have to choose. At least comment down below and let me know your thoughts on my takes. I love all you. Dunk out. Peace.